afternoon. Let me see. Let me make sure that we are up and running. All right. Good afternoon, everybody. It is now just right at 12 on the dot. So uh, we're going to get started here shortly. I did want to just go over a few quick announcements before we get into today's live boot camp, and I'll explain in a little more detail what the what we'll be going over today. But before we get into that, it is officially, of course, the first Monday of May. So we are now into a new month, which means we are in Women's Health Month. So we'll be having a lot of really awesome information this month uh, regarding women's health, some great seminars coming up. Um, there will also be another live boot camp coming up later this month on the 23rd. So make sure you keep that in your calendar. And I know there will be more people trickling in um, over the next few minutes. But for those of you joining already, it's great to have you back. I know it's been uh, two or three weeks since our last live boot camp. So uh, if this is your first one, welcome. If, this, if it's not your first one, then you kind of know how these go. But as we go through today's uh, live boot camp, um, in, in just a moment, I'll explain what our focus is going to be today. You might already have an idea based on uh, when you're registering, we'll be going over some modified exercises, modified versions of very common body weight exercises. And I'll explain in that, I'll explain more detail on that as we get closer. But um, but yeah, so thanks you so much again. With it being Women's Health Month, that will be our main focus in terms of what our content will be over our next few weeks for our Move Monday. So look out for that. If you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel yet, make sure you do that. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. Every Monday, we have a new uh, recorded video that will come out with a lot of great information on anything from exercises to nutrition to just overall health information. So anyway, I just wanted to take a quick moment here. I'm going to introduce our uh, one of our newest team members, awesome guy, Johannes. Uh, I'm going to have him come into the frame here. Go ahead and introduce yourself and just let everyone know what you'll be doing here. Hello, everyone. Thank you guys for all of your service. Thank you for being so welcoming. I've had the opportunity to get out to a few sites. Brandon, thank you so much yeah. for your warm welcome. Of course. Um, coming on, serving on as a new resident life coach, and I'm um, just here to support you guys in any endeavors that you're looking for, for both uh, personally and professionally. So if you see me on site, uh, feel free, do not hesitate to come and engage with me. We'd uh, love to just talk about different things we can do to continue to help you uh, so that your work experience is getting to just be better and better and more seamless. And, and again, us just giving you as much support as yeah, Thank you. awesome. Thanks, Johannes. Appreciate it. Um, so yeah, definitely keep your eye out for Johannes out on uh, location and his Thoughtful Thursdays coming out in the near future. But uh, um, again, a lot of lot of awesome things set for the rest of the year. Now, as we go into today's live bootcamp, I know I briefly mentioned that this would be uh, a focus of going over modified exercises. Now, some of you or all of you may already have an idea of what modified exercises are or different modifications of exercises that you may already do. But again, I want to explain in a little more detail what the point of a modification is for an exercise and different ways that you can modify an exercise. There usually are multiple ways to modify an exercise. And a lot of that depends on, of course, the exercise itself, as well as what needs to be done to safely complete the exercise. Now, big Probably one of the main reasons an exercise needs to be modified is so that you can complete the exercise with proper form. If you are struggling to complete an exercise with proper form, usually that's where a modification needs to come in. Also, of course, for safety reasons, to reduce risks of injury and other reasons. But some different ways, there are about five main ways we can modify an exercise. Oftentimes you can modify uh, an exercise in more than one way. So what I mean by that, for example, if you were to do squats, and you were going to see some squats today, if you were to do some squats, a way that you can modify that exercise, if you struggle to get down deep into a squat, you can reduce your range of motion. So for a lot of exercises, if necessary, simply reducing or changing your range of motion of that exercise is a way you can modify it. So simply not going as down deep into a squat, as deep as you can safely, um, is a way you can modify the exercise. Another way you can do it is if you're doing an exercise with weights, so dumbbells, or if you're using a barbell, something, uh, a weighted resistance exercise, you can change the amount of weight. If you're struggling to complete a repetition of an exercise with weights, lower the weight. Oftentimes, simply reducing the weight, making it lighter, 
will make it a little bit easier. And then once you can safely do that repetition um, with proper form, that's when you know you're in a good place. As long as it's still challenging though, you still want it to be challenging, but also not causing you to sacrifice your form with that exercise. You can also reduce the amount of reps. If you feel like uh, you start, if you're doing, let's say 10 squats and you get to squat number eight, and all of a sudden you realize you're not able to do your squat as deep and as properly as you did the previous seven, then maybe reduce the amount of reps. Another way, changing speed. If you're doing an exercise quickly and your form is breaking down and not looking good, slow the speed down. Uh, a couple other ones, changing impact. So if you're doing a higher impact movement, like a, like a burpee or something where you're jumping, reducing that impact, reducing the, the height from where you're jumping, something like that. The last one, changing your surface. Sometimes if you're doing an exercise on a surface that isn't as stable, for example, if anyone knows what a BOSU ball is or uh, a yo exercise yoga ball where there's uh, you know, something that's inflated, you have an unstable surface or you're on a foam floor, that's not as stable of a surface. If you're on a surface that's a little more stable, again, it's gonna make it likely easier to complete that exercise safely and with proper form. So that's what I mean when I talk about modifications. There are, of course, many different ways we can modify. Today's exercise we'll go over, you're gonna see eight different exercises. Um, so with our focus today, is it gonna be so much about necessarily getting our heart rates elevated or you know, getting super sweaty uh, today. And if you do, that's okay. But with today's uh, live bootcamp, today's more about helping you to know what modifications you can do for eight of the most common body weight functional exercises. So uh, I'm gonna get out of my seat here. Some of the exercises you'll see, I'll be using this chair um, and I'll show you different things that we can do. But we're gonna start off with our first exercise here. Let me move this back. Now, we're going to focus on different muscle groups throughout these eight exercises. We're going to get almost every muscle group, main muscle group in our body. So our first exercise we're going to start with today is a plank. I know most times when you hear the word plank, you already start getting uh, panicky or you start feeling like, oh, I don't want to do that. Like, you know, your body's going to start shaking. If you're struggling to get into a plank position, I'll show you a modification that you can do that will make it substantially easier to hold a plank while still working on strengthening our abdominal or core muscles. So as you get down into a plank position, I'll show you what a standard plank would look like. Generally speaking, a standard plank is gonna be on your, on your elbows and forearms. And keep a straight body, make sure you're not pushing your hips way up in the air and letting those hips sag. Keep the body, your body as straight as possible. Your feet, your toes plant on the floor, at least shoulder width apart or within that or within shoulder width apart. And you're gonna keep your abdominal muscles tight so that your hips don't sag. So you try to hold that essentially as long as you can, at least 30 to 60 seconds or more. Now, a modification you can do for that plank, simply lowering your knees down to the floor. As you can see here, I have a mat, which is helping to reduce that impact, making it a little bit softer of a surface for me. Hopefully you have a mat, or if you're on carpet, somewhere that's softer is gonna be ideal, because that you just, your knees could start hurting a little bit. But when you lower your knees, start off in that, uh, in that full plank position, but then, Go ahead and lower your knees down to the floor. You can cross at your ankles. Make sure that body's still stretched out nice and straight. And you're going to hold this position as, you know, I would recommend starting off if you can hold it for at least 30 seconds. If that feels easy, increase that time. And then see if you can work your way up to 60 seconds. So today, this first exercise, we're going to hold this plank just for 30 seconds. I'll watch my time on my watch. If you feel like that's easy, by all means, you're welcome to do these exercises with their normal version. But today we'll be focusing on um, me showing you the example of the modified version. So I'm gonna lower my knees down to the floor. We'll start that 30 second clock. Do your best, hold that position. Try to not let those hips dip down. All right, so we're gonna start off here in three, two, one. All right, hold that position. Keep the body as straight as you can. Still remember to breathe through these exercises here. As you can see, I lowered my knees down to the floor. My body's still straight. We're halfway there, 15 more seconds. Continue to breathe nice and easy in through the nose, out through your mouth. Five more seconds, we're almost there. Three, two, one, and relax. Okay, so if that felt easy, by all means, either increase the time or do a standard plank. If you felt like that was challenging, great. That's 
what we want out of these exercises. They should feel challenging. Um, we're going to go into our next exercise. So I do want to explain in a little bit of detail of each of these exercises, ways you can modify them. And again, today's not as much about doing multiple rounds of, you know, or multiple reps and multiple rounds today. We're just more so uh, kind of helping to educate you on ways that you can do these exercises safely if you're having a hard time doing the standard version. Our next exercise, we're going to stay down on the floor, push-ups. Push-ups, great for our chest muscles, works our arm muscles a lot. With a standard push-up, very similar to a plank position, except you're going to be on your palms, um, arms nice and straight below your shoulders, straight body, feet off shoulder width apart. Typically with a push-up, you're going to lower your chest down to the floor, keeping your body straight, and extend all the way back up. Now, with a push-up uh, modification, one of the first things you can do to modify this exercise and make it easier, if necessary, is a wall push-up. So a wall push-up, essentially, I know it might be kind of hard to see from this angle, but with a wall push-up, hands are going to be on the wall. I'm going to step my feet out away from the wall, so I'm essentially leaning toward the wall here. And then keeping my body still straight, I'm going to lower myself toward the wall and then back out. If that feels easy, you can even lower yourself down to a position if you have a chair that's stable or a bench or some, some sort of stable surface that's still elevated so that your upper body is elevated, it's gonna make it easier than yourself being all the way down on the floor. So what we're gonna do here for these, uh, for these push-ups, we're gonna do 10 reps of wall push-ups. Again, if that's easy, that's okay. You know that you can increase it, make it more challenging next time. Again, the, the, the closer your upper body is to the ground, to a flat level, the harder it is to a standard push-up. So with our wall push-ups here, I'll be kind of facing away from you, so I'll do my best. But remember, the closer your feet are to the wall, the easier it's going to be. The further your feet are from the wall, the more challenging it becomes. So I'm going to start off here, hands about shoulder width apart. I'm going to lower my, or I should say, uh, in a way, lower myself toward the wall and then fully extend my arms back out. Here we go. We're going to knock out 10 repetitions. Let's go ahead and start going toward the wall. One. Two, three, four, nice, easy, controlled repetitions. Five, halfway there. Six, you might feel this in your arms a little bit. Seven, work in our chest. Eight, last couple here. Here we go. Nine, and ten. I mean, I, I definitely felt a little bit of a burn there. I hope you at least felt a little bit of a burn. And again, if that was super easy for you, Keep lowering your angle of your body down until it feels challenging enough, but you can still complete all 10 repetitions with proper form. Our next exercise here, you've seen this probably, or you've probably done this exercise. This is one of the single great, greatest functional exercises that you can do a body weight exercise, and that is a squat. Now, a squat is an exercise you probably don't even realize you do on a daily basis when you're getting up from your chair, you're standing up, you're essentially Standing up from a squat or squatting back down into a chair. And in that, mo in that motion is a squat. So for our the variation of this squat that I'm going to show, and it's something that I just mentioned earlier, is reducing our range of motion. I'll show you another modification too. But what I mean by reducing our range of motion, typically with a bodyweight squat, you want to start off with your feet at least shoulder width apart. Chest up nice and tall here. If you want to bring your hands up to your chest there for, uh, for stability and balance. But... Feet at least shoulder width apart. If your toes are pointed slightly out, that's okay. But what you want to do is you go into the squat, keep your weight even throughout the bottom of your foot. You don't want to let those heels start coming off the ground. So as you go into your squat, generally speaking, you're going to those hips. You're going to start hinging at those hips. Your butt's coming back. As you go into that squat, try to get down to at least a 90-degree angle at your knee or deeper. But if you are struggling to get down into that range of motion, decrease it as deep as you can while still being able to fully complete that rep safely and effectively and that is challenging. So what I mean by that, simply not going down as deep, maybe going down halfway down to that 90 degree angle or as deep as you can while safely being able to come back up to your standing position. We're gonna do 10 repetitions. Before we start that, another thing you can do, if you have a chair next to you, place one hand on a chair, it helps to kind of push yourself back up. So a little bit, easier as well. But we're going to just do a standard bodyweight squat with a reduced range of motion. Again, this might be different for everyone. Everyone's reduced range of motion that you need to modify with. Some might not be able to go down as deep. Some of you, some of you might be able to go all the way as down deep into a squat. 
We'll back up 10 reps here. Remember, keeping that chest up, eyes forward, feet at the shoulder width apart, hands up by your chest. I'm going to do about a 45 degree angle, about halfway down and back up. Here we go. 10 repetitions and go ahead and join me here. Here we go. One, two, three, four. You should start feeling a burn there. Five, halfway, six, seven, eight, nine, last one, and 10. So now that modification, or that was a modification, that modification might have been too easy for you. If not, great. If it was, go down deeper into a squat. If that was still too easy, add some weights. If you have some weights, hold some weights in your hands, go through that same range of motion and make sure that those, uh, those knees are staying apart, make sure that those hips are coming back and that those heels are staying on the ground. Our next exercise here, a lunge. Now this one is something, uh, you know, obviously still a way that we can do a couple different modifications. We can reduce the range of motion. We can put our hand on a stable surface, like a table or a chair. I'm actually gonna show you something that you can do from the ground without needing to even stand. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna lay on our backs and go into a single leg hip bridge. Um, with a single leg hip bridge, you're gonna lay back on the floor. You're gonna have one foot planted flat on the ground, knee up, other leg extended, keeping those knees in line. Make sure your upper, uh, upper back shoulders flat on the ground, arms flat on the ground. And I'm gonna raise one, uh, or I'm gonna raise my hips off the floor, keeping my other legs extended. I'm gonna push my hips up toward the ceiling as high as I can, and then slowly back down. We'll get five repetitions on each side. Um, so that's 10 reps total. Just for this exercise, we'll keep it at 10 reps total. But we'll do five reps on one side, five reps on the other. A little bit lower impact. Um, and again, if this is tough, just reduce the range of motion. Just go up as high as you can with those hips. So we're gonna push up here. Here we go. One, two, three, four, and five. Go ahead and switch. Other foot flat on the ground, other leg extended. We're gonna push off same way, keeping those glutes tight, pushing our hips up to the ceiling. One, two, three, four, last one. And five, good. Now, I, something I, I probably, I might have forgotten to mention as you're going through these exercises, this is more so for educational purposes, but I do recommend if you were to do these exercises on your own at another time, I would recommend doing each of these exercises at least two to three rounds, at least eight to 12 reps of each exercise, at least two to three rounds, at least eight to 12 reps for each of these. But for the sake of time, I'm just going through each exercise and showing ways you can modify them. And there was something else I was reading earlier, I think um, that was an, an insane statistic going back to the plank. If you missed that and you were joining late, um, we did a plank exercise for our very first exercise. Something I was reading earlier that was crazy was I was curious what the world record was for the longest plank hold. The world record, some of you might know this already because it was in the, in the news not that long ago, within the last six months. Longest plank hold. So holding a plank position nonstop, world record is nine hours and 30 minutes and one second to be exact. So nine hours and 30 minutes of holding a plank nonstop. That's longer than a, than a technical workday. That's longer than most people do anything, let alone doing an exercise, holding a plank, in a plank position for nine and a half hours. Um, so a crazy, crazy uh, statistic. I know when I'm doing a plank within a minute or two, I'm shaking like crazy. So I can't even imagine doing a plank for that long, but just something that I thought was kind of crazy that, uh, you know, you, if you didn't already know that, you can impress your, uh, your friends and coworkers with. But going into our next exercise, uh, jumping jacks. Jumping jacks, great exercise um, for a cardiovascular exercise, but with your jumping jacks, a way you can uh, modify a jumping jack is there are a couple of things, but what I'm going to show you today is taking the jump out of it. We're essentially just going to do a step out uh, with our arms. So what that's going to look like, we're going to do one side at a time. So I'm going to step out, raising my arms up over my head and back to the middle. You can alternate to the other side. The faster you do it, you know, the more your, your heart rate is going to be elevated, but just taking the jump out of it. So reducing the impact on your joints. Uh, especially if you're dealing with lower body joint pain or issues or injuries, take out that jump entirely, 
We're going to step out to the side, arms up and over as we step out. We're going to still do 10 reps total. Um, and again, if you feel like that's too easy, do a standard jumping jack. That's totally fine. But we're going to do 10 reps total. Remember, each of these exercises, I still recommend doing at least two to three rounds, at least eight to 12 reps when you are doing a workout on your own. So here we go. Stepping out to the side. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. I know some of you that might have felt very easy. Some of you that might have still been challenging, but that's the point. Different ways we can modify, but that may, may not apply to you. Our next exercise here, everyone's favorite, the burpee. Now with the burpee, um, a lot of times just kind of like the plank and some of these other exercises, as soon as you hear that word, it, it, it strikes fear in your heart. Now with the burpee, there are ways you can modify it definitely to make it easier. For example, now this chair rolls, so I wouldn't recommend to share with uh, with the, uh, the ability to roll away from you. But if you have a steady surface, as long as your upper body is ele elevated throughout, it can make it easier. But I will, the version I'm going to show you is a way you can walk it out and back in without that jumping motion. It makes it a little bit easier. So what you're going to start off with here, I'll show you a standard burpee first, then we'll get right into it. Standard burpee, you bring your hands on the floor, pop your feet back. Sometimes you might do a push up at the bottom, pop your feet back to the top, and then a hop. We're going to do it differently. We're going to walk our feet back one at a time and walk them back forward one at a time. So what that's going to look like, I'm going to hinge forward at my hips, bring my hands down to the floor. I'm going to walk one foot back, another foot back. That's essentially a tall plank position. I'll walk my one foot back forward again, walk the other foot back, and then stand up tall. Obviously, if you do it quickly, it can still be a challenging exercise. We're going to do 10 repetitions real quick. Get ready. All right, here we go. One. Two, three, four, almost to the halfway point, five, six, seven, eight, nine, see, I bet you're sweating a little bit now, and ten. That's no joke. I know my heart rate's up a little bit. I'm starting to get a little bit of sweaty, so that's just the way you can do a burpee without jumping around and popping up and out of that motion. So, burpee, two last exercises here real quick. Now, this is a good exercise for our back muscles, especially our lower back, and that's doing a Superman exercise. Now, with your Superman, we're going to be laying down on the floor on our stomachs here, but what we're going to do typically the superman is you're going to lay flat on the surf or flat on the ground in your chest hips you're going to raise your arms up off the ground your legs up off the ground you're going to feel that in your lower back probably your glutes a little bit your hamstrings way we can do that i know sometimes it can be really tough or you might feel a little bit of pain through that something that we can do a little bit differently is alternating sides with a bird dog so with your bird dog position you're going to get on our knees knees directly below my hips hands directly below or my arms extended directly below, below my shoulders I'm going to extend one arm straight out, opposite leg straight back, and then return to the center. We'll alternate to the other side. Oftentimes, that will be a little bit easier to do than a Superman from the flat surface. So, with your Birdman, we'll still do, or sorry, Birdman, with your bird dog, we'll still, still do 10 total. So, we're going to start off here in our tall or our kneeling plank position, alternate. Here we go. One, alternate to the other side. Two, three, Probably feel that again in the lower back and glutes and uh, hamstrings a little bit. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, last one, and ten. Yeah, I, I know I felt it. If you were doing those bird dogs correctly, you should have felt that again in the lower back glute area, which is good. Our last exercise is going to be a muscle we haven't gotten yet our tricep muscles, or maybe. We hit it a little bit with push-ups, but specifying our triceps here, we're still going to be laying down on the floor now with our tricep dips. Generally speaking, if you're doing this from a chair or a couch or a hard surface, you would have your hands behind you on a hard surface and you'd lower your butt down to the floor and push back up. But a modification for this makes it substantially easier. We're going to lay on our stomach again. And we're going to do what's called prone tricep lifts. Now with your prone tricep lifts, 
We're going to get in our prone position, which is laying down flat on the ground on our stomachs. Arms extended down to my side, palms facing up. All I'm simply going to do is raise my palms up toward the ceiling as high as I can and back down. Much easier way to work our tricep muscles. Still going to do 10 reps after that. We're done with the exercise. So we're so close, guys. Here we go. Laying down on the surface. Here we go. Nice and easy, slow, controlled reps. One, two. So we got to make sure you can probably feel those triceps. Those are the muscles in the back of that arm. Here we go. Three, four, five, six, seven, last three, eight. Keep those arms tight. Nine and ten. All right, by the end, I know at first it's like, wow, that's pretty easy. By the time you get through that tenth repetition, you really start to feel that in those arms. One more time, like I said, with all these exercises, still recommend doing them. Any exercise, at least two to three rounds, at least eight to 12 repetitions or more. Um, now, for those of you that may have missed my initial introduction to what we were doing today, as you might have noticed by now, I was focusing on modifications of these exercise, exercises. If you felt like these were easy, make them more challenging, add some weights, go through that full range of motion. Um, if you felt like these were really good modifications and now you're able to do the exercises safely, awesome. These are now ways that you can do these safely, especially if you're just getting back into working out or if you're recovering from an injury or you're sore, not able to go through a full range of motion. These are ways to do some of these exercises safely, more effectively. Now, before we finish it off for today, I know the last, uh, the last few live boot camps We've been asking a trivia question at the end of the live boot camp. So how this works is I'm going to ask you a question about something that I mentioned during this live boot camp. The first person to get it right in the chat. So make sure your your fingers are ready on the uh, keyboard. First person to get this question right wins a little prize. So for the question I have for you, and I know we're almost done here, but the trivia question I have for you today is. What was the world record time for the plank? What was the world record time for the plank that I mentioned just a little bit ago? Uh, do we have somebody in already mentioning it? Yeah. Victor is the first one. Congratulations, Victor. If somebody else, uh, if you already knew it or you're streaming at your computer, um, congrats as well. But we already had somebody answering right away. So thank you, uh, Victor, for getting that, getting that in there quickly and everyone else that are shooting in their answers. Now, if you missed it, it was nine and a half hours, nine hours, 30 minutes, and technically one second. So uh, that's crazy. I can't even wrap my mind around it. But again, I just wanted to thank you all today. I know this, I know we're almost exactly to 1230, so I want to be uh, respectful of your time. But thank you, everybody, for joining. Um, and uh, it was awesome getting to have another live bootcamp with you. Remember, the next one coming up, May 23rd, Monday, May 23rd at 12 p.m. as well. And uh, it was great having you look out for Johannes coming out your way in the near future. And uh, thank you guys again. Look for those Move Mondays. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Have a great day, everybody. It was awesome. And I'll see you next time. Take care.